Mic check one two. How y'all doing out there? <clears throat> it is late, but we'll get into it. All right. So late night edition. Another live stream. We're gonna answer a question and deal with these topics. All praise to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Rukakudash. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Shalom to the Holy Elect. All right, so this lesson is entitled, the title is Yahweh Shah. Okay, Yahweh Shah. Kingdom of Heaven, Slavery of the Nations, and Nuclear War. And you know, I just had to give it a title. So we're going to be discussing some of these things here. You know, before I get into it, I'm just going to say, the people, when you ask these questions, well, you, you'll see it. You'll see it. <laughs> so anyway, excuse, you know, the kind of dark in here or whatever. I mean, there's lights all around. It's, it's too much light. It's too bright. You know what I'm saying? I may leave it. Let's see. Let's see how that looks. I can, I can deal without all the light, you know what I'm saying, when it gets late. Yeah, I guess I'll leave it. It seems to be a bit much. <clears throat> all right, so anyway bags and shit in the background <laughs> just stuff in the background just don't pay no attention so always just get into it so first this is a video that was done by a brother um i mean a question this, this is the video that was done by us it was camp saturday all right this is the first part of it it says the end of all things is at hand it's only like 19 minutes long because the the phone overheated and we wound up having to start over on a, on a whole nother lesson which that one was over three hours long this one's only 19 minutes but on the comment board there was a question that was asked by an individual all right so this person's name is Benatizak 144k it's a new a new a new person all right a new person anyway he says shalom first of all i want to give all praises to yahweh by hashem yahweh shah for making us israelites this is an honor we do not deserve, and yet our Lord Yahweh Shah bestowed it upon us anyway. So again, all praises, which a lot of Jakes be doing too much. But anyway, he says here, I have a question. A question. I have a question. The scripture says that Yahweh Shah is coming back to establish the kingdom of heaven on earth. But if Yahweh Shah does all the heavy lifting, then what will the what will the so-called white man and the other nations do since they will be our slaves? I thought we was going to make them build our kingdom since we built theirs. Now, I'm going to read all this question first and we're going to come back and answer it. But I want to say right away, this individual says, the scripture says this, the scripture says that. So the scripture is saying all this stuff, but you don't know where the scriptures are that say it. You're the one saying it. You'll see what I mean. He says, the scripture says that your house is coming back to establish the kingdom of heaven on earth, on the earth. But if Yahweh Shah does all the heavy lifting, then what will be the so-called white man and the other nations? Uh, what will the so-called white man and the other nations do since they will be our slaves? I thought we was going to make them build our kingdom since we built theirs. Also, scripture says that when Yahweh Shah comes back, he is going to kill. What does it say to that? If you know the scriptures say all these things, but you have no idea where the scriptures say that they say it, you're the one saying the scripture says. The scriptures say that his garment will be drenched in blood and that we, Israelite men, will fight alongside Yahweh Shah after we have been changed into our new immortal bodies. It also says that the earth will be destroyed by thermonuclear fire. Well, if nukes are going to be used to destroy our enemies, then who is Yahweh Shah coming back to fight if everybody going to be already dead? Will the nukes be used before or after Yahweh Shah's war with the nations? This person is all over the place. All over the place. And it seems like he's saying the scriptures say this, the scriptures say that. Well, if you read that in the scriptures, why do you not know where it says it? I'm, I'm just having trouble with, you know, with all of this. You know what I mean? Like, I know what he's asking. And you it's, it's clear what he's saying. But why do you not know? This is the person that's watching the video. Listen to what's being said. And you repeat it. But he didn't take no notes. Because if he took notes, he would know how to go back and say, okay, this brothers did say this. This is right here. Don't repeat shit if you don't know it. If you can't prove it, if you don't know no scripture references, don't repeat it. You're supposed to be studying, man. Okay, I got to give, you know, a little bit of a lightweight rebuke because this is this shit is annoying. 
the way that it, it reads. Now we're gonna go back and we're gonna go point for point and we're gonna bring out some of this stuff. It is late, but still, I ain't really doing nothing. So, and you, he says he had a question. No, you have several questions. The scripture says that Yahweh Shai is coming back to establish the kingdom of heaven on earth. Let's get that first. Let's get the scripture that says that shows that he's gonna be the ruler. It says, but if Yahweh Shai does all the heavy lifting, then what will be the so-called white man and the other nations, or what will the so-called white man and the other nations do since they will be our slaves? I thought we was gonna make them build our kingdom since we built theirs. Well, if you knew what the scriptures say, why are you asking that? Because you're saying he says here over and over, the scripture says, if the scriptures say it and you're repeating it, why do you not know where it's at? So let's leave there for a minute. We'll get some of these scriptures here. <laughs> yeah. Let's get some of these scriptures here. I'm kind of close to the screen. So Salaki, you know, you when you're away from home, everything is different. So first, let's go to the book of Daniel. You know what? No. Hold on here. I'm going to tell you what I want to go. First, we'll go to Revelation 11. Let's do that. All right. Revelation 11 and verse 15. What does it say? It says the seven angels sounded and there were great voices in heaven saying the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his anointed and he shall reign forever and ever. This is Yahweh Shai. So obviously this this world is going to be ruled by our Lord to save Yahweh Shai, right? Let's read it again. And the seven angels sounded and there were great voices in heaven saying the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his anointed. He shall reign forever and ever. Okay, so he's going to be the ruler on the earth. He's going to be supreme ruler on the earth. Now, the heavenly father, his father is the ruler of the whole everything, but his son is going to do the reigning in the flesh. Revelation 5 and 9, it says, and they sung a new song saying, thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou was slain and has redeemed us to the most high by thy blood out of every tongue, every kindred and tongue and people and nation. And has made us into our God, kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. So the Savior is going to reign on the earth, and his elect is going to reign with him, which really translates to all the Israelites later on in the kingdom. But in the first resurrection, it's just the elect, which is one third of the house of Israel. Let's see, what else, where else do I want to go? We're going to leave here for a quick second. Let's go to the book of Daniel. Go to the book of Daniel here. All right, now it says right here, the Son of Man presented, and the Son of Man is the Savior. And you're going to see two separate beings here. So this is Daniel 7, 13. It says, I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man, Yahweh Shai, came with the clouds of heaven, the chariots, and came to the Ancient of Days. That's the Almighty, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. And they brought him near before him. And there was given unto him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away in his kingdom, that which shall not be destroyed. So that's your house shy, right? He's gonna rule, he's gonna reign on the earth, and his people are gonna reign with him. I'm trying to remember the, the question that the guy asked. Let's also get Revelation 19. So clearly see rulership, and this is also gonna show you how shy again coming to rule. We'll read a few of these. This is Revelation 19 and 11. It says, and, and I saw heaven open. And this is the heaven of heavens and also the heavens above the earth. Just heaven. And I saw heaven open and behold a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. This is Yahweh Shah coming with the clouds or with the chariots and the angels. His eyes were as a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written. That no man knew himself knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of the Most High. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Right? So he's gonna be coming with the chariots and the angels. They're coming in the clouds, white and clean, as it says there. So you're seeing the idea that Yahweh Shah is coming, he's coming to rule. And we'll get some of the rest of that because the way the guy asked the questions, he's all over the place. He really just wants somebody to tell him what order shit is going to happen. He really want to know, like, when is it is going to be on Tuesday, going to be on Friday. He want to know that that kind of shit. You can tell by the, by the question. 
And it, you know, nothing wrong with people asking questions, but don't try to trick us into asking some answers for shit. Just, you know, but he did a thorough saying what he wanted to know. But my thing is, it was aggravating is if you saying to me, the Bible says this and it says that, why do you not know where it's at then, man? You obviously been watching the video. Why you ain't taking no notes? <laughs> I mean, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. Let's go on with it. So I got a couple more. Here. Let's get uh, Jeremiah 23. Right, just establishing that Yahweh Shah is going to be the one that's doing this ruling, this reigning. Jeremiah 23, verse 5. Now, if you read up here at the top, the coming Messiah, the righteous branch, is what it says, right? Now, Old Testament Israelites will tell you that the Savior is not mentioned in the Old Testament. Clearly, he is. Every time I ask the Old Testament only Israelite to explain Jeremiah 23 and 5 on down, they've nearly passed out. We did it a couple weeks ago. This guy said this was talking about Elijah. Well, he didn't say this scripture was talking about Elijah. He said Elijah was coming. To save the Israelites, which is completely stupid. But the, we're going to just jump here to verse 5. Because up here it tells you the most I'm going to gather is a remnant out of all nations. You know, which that's going to happen. But the gathering, Yahweh is going to literally do it. Right now it's being done through the spirit of Yahweh When he comes and the angels, they're going to save the elect out of all nations. Jeremiah 23 and 5, it says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch. A righteous branch from the house of David is not King David himself. This is from the house of David, a righteous branch, which when you go into this righteous branch, it goes back to the lineage of, of King David. OK, I mean, bottom line, he was a bloodline descendant of Joseph. Which he was the, the son, you know, through the through the flesh, through the seed, the sperm. And a king shall reign and prosper and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. So obviously. The same king is going to make judge the judge and make war. This is the same individual. And a king shall reign and prosper. He's going to reign and the king of heaven is going to prosper. He and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. In his days, Judah shall be saved and Israel shall dwell safely. And this is his name whereby he shall be called the Lord, our righteousness. Therefore, behold, the days come, said the Lord, that they shall no more say the Lord liveth, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But the Lord liveth, which brought up and which led the seed, the seed, not a spiritual Israelite, not no damn, you know, you, you forget about the real Israelite. You're going to get these new people that claim not, no, not them. The seed of the house of Israel out of the north country and from all countries where they had driven them and they shall dwell in their own land. So obviously the Israelites are still in exile at the time when the Savior comes back. They ain't going to go to the Holy Land first, you know, and set up the kingdom and then the Lord will come and do the rest. OK, so obviously there you go. So this is all your house is doing all, all these things. Let's, let's, let's close that one. So let's go back to the dude question, because we, we established some stuff here is I mean, I really have no no. Uh, no. I mean, I, the best thing for me to do is just answer the questions. How he's asking them, but there's no order in particular. So here. Scripture says that Yahweh Shai, so we, we, we established that Yahweh Shai is the one that's going to be the ruler. The kingdom is his. The scripture says that Yahweh Shai is coming back to establish the kingdom of heaven on earth. We proved that. But if Yahweh Shai does all the heavy lifting, what will the so-called white man and the other nations do since they will be our slaves? Now, where did he get that from? What did he get? The, but this, he didn't get that from anywhere. I've never heard anybody teach that. But he's listening to, he's watching videos for entertainment because he's not studying. He's not taking notes. He's just Believing what he's been told, he's trying to piece it together without studying. That's what happens. So he's saying, Yahweh he, Shah, he believes how Shah, Yahweh Shah will come back with the chairs and he's going to snap his fingers and the kingdom going to be set up. That's not what's going to happen, man. Nuclear war is going to break out on the planet Earth. I'm going to explain it before we get all the scriptures. Right now, the gospel is being preached. The Israelites are waking up. The elect is being sealed. Okay? That's what's, that's what's happening right now in the spirit. Once the elect is safely out of the way, you know, as far as uh, in the spirit, they seal. Then the Most High is going to cause a chain of events, which is Jacob's trouble, the Mark of the Beast, World War Three, whatever. When Yahweh Shah comes, he's going to save the elect at his coming. You know what? Before I even say it, let's go back to this. At his coming, though, the world is going to be still up and running. Nuclear war is going to ravage this whole planet, and it's going to mess up this whole, fuck up this whole society. Yahweh Shah is coming back. He's going to stop the war. And all the nations going to try to fight it. Another thing is the earth is not going to be destroyed by nuclear missiles. Like this guy is saying the, the whole world going to be destroyed. No, the world's not going to be destroyed. 
It's not going to be destroyed. Can a brother put up uh, the earth and body forever? You know what? I may just have to go and look it up and, and read it because there's a couple of scriptures. We just we always go into that. But let's get the first immediate thing he said. He says, but if Yahushua does all the heavy lifting, then what will the so-called white men and other nations do since they will be our slaves? I thought we was going to make them build our kingdom since, since we built theirs. Oh, Lord. Yeah, at the second coming of the Lord, America will be destroyed. Okay, not before the Savior comes because it's still up. The missiles are going to be on the way to destroy this place. And the Lord going to come and snatch his people out of the way in the nick of time. This bitch going to be destroyed. And the rest of the nation is going into slavery. But let's read. We're going to go to Isaiah. I can't even find the doggone thing now. Just hold on tight, brothers. Yeah, let me bring this scripture up. Let's first get Revelation. We're going to get a few precepts here. I ain't going to try to go, you know, everywhere. Let's see. Right. Because it would be all night. Because the scriptures do say these things. But I wouldn't believe it if I didn't read it my own self. And if I had read it my own self, then I thought I probably would have took the notes if I'm that guy. As you see, Jake got a lazy spirit. All right, so. And this guy, Nehemiah Yasharala, if you was the dude that was on the comment board scoffing on the apostle's comment board, you can, you can bounce. Cause this, that, now, this might not be the guy, but it was one dude I showed in the video I did the other night. His ass was scoffing hard, talking shit. That's just bottom line. We don't, you know. Let me go on. Jim S. Casey, Jake over Ecclesiastes 1 and 4. One generation passes away and another generation cometh, but the earth abideth forever. Okay? Okay, it wasn't you, bro. Okay, Salaki, it wasn't you. I didn't think it didn't look like the same avatar. But there's a guy that was over there scoffing. He, he, you know, y'all you know, know how it is. Okay, well, that's good. I'm glad you ain't that guy. So as the scripture said, one generation cometh another, and another generation passes away. Salaki, one generation passes away. And another generation coming, but the earth abideth forever. It's never going to be destroyed. And that's why I say, Jake, be too busy trying to jump into the deep stuff. Why do you not know that the planet is going to be here forever? You are there worrying about your house shy and the kingdom and nukes and all this. And you don't even know that the earth ain't going to be destroyed ever. That's why you got to have a foundation under you, man. If you don't have a foundation, you fuck. You can't understand nothing. That's why we get on guys about watching videos for entertainment. And not taking notes, not taking the truth serious. It just sounds like a far out crazy. Oh man, it's a space movie. He gonna come back. He gonna have the, the, the wristbands like space goes. He gonna hit him and shoot out freeze ray. No, 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 man. This is real stuff that's going to happen. But you got to approach it with practicality and with you know intelligence and with a little bit of damn sense, man. Right. This is an excellent point. Brother said King, kings don't build their own kingdom, and kingdoms are just not ready made built. There has to be work put in. They're going to build our kingdom. Let's read this brother's scripture. This is uh, GMS Haraka. Isaiah 65, 17. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered nor come into mind. This proves there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth, but it really shows that this, this earth is not going to be destroyed. As this brother got, the kingdom is not. Revelation 21 and 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. Meaning, the earth is going to be remade in righteousness. The whole planet, the landscape of the planet is going to be remade. Something supernatural is going to happen to what the Most High may have, and it's not written, but he may have the tectonic plates come back together or certain islands go out of existence. Or for example, America, Babylon the Great is not going to be on the map because it's going to be a desert. It's not going to be like an inhabited country. So other countries are also going to get portions going to be destroyed, but the Lord is going to cause the righteousness. We're going to be living every, every the whole planet is going to be governed by the laws of the Holy Bible. So the earth is going to replenish itself. You know, the seasons going to continue on, I would imagine. I mean, that, that stuff's not really written, but we, you know, that's why I say we know in part, we prophesy in part, not because it's not 100% true, but there are certain things that we can't tell you. We don't know how your house shot going to look. We don't know who all, how, what level of spiritual power we all have our own chairs. We have to borrow a chair. You know, you know, things like that. With stuff that we can't tell you what the fruit, fruit and vegetables going to be like. But we know the earth is going to go back to its former glory. But it's going to be remade in righteousness because it's going to be a righteous vibration on the earth. The shrimp, the crabs, the, the lobster, they're going to just be allowed to be where they are. Nobody's going to eat those in the kingdom. Right? Like the brother says, refreshed. 
when it said new heaven and new earth it's not new as in a, the old was destroyed and the lord just created a new one no it's new as in refreshed okay way better more technology everything is advanced we're gonna be flawless ourselves new bodies anyway they got to get a few of these scriptures because he was saying what are the if if they if we're gonna if, if your house is gonna do all the heavy lifting what are the nations gonna do well first off your house ain't gonna do no damn heavy lifting man okay he ain't gonna be working he's the king he's the number one individual in the kingdom of heaven why the fuck is he gonna do any work so let's go to revelation 2 just to hit a few precepts revelation chapter 2 and verse 26 it says, and he that overcometh and keepeth my works until the end, to him will I give power over the nations. See, Yahweh is getting rulership. We already know that. He's going to give power over the nations until he's elect. Him that overcometh is, is of the elect. To he that overcometh and keepeth my works until the end, to him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall be broken to shivers, even as I receive of my father. See? So he's going to give, let's see here, uh, his throne. He's going to say it in another place. So as it says, the nations, we're going to get power over the nations, and they're going to be ruled over very harshly and stiffly. Now, this is Revelation 3 and 21. And it says, to him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne. The throne is rulership, not a big-ass chair that everybody can sit in with you have a shot like a long-ass throne couch. No, the throne is rulership. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am sat down with my father in his throne. He that hath an ear to hear, Salakia, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. So rulership is going to be granted to the elect, the 144,000, and the rest of the one-third are going to reign as kings, rulers, priests with Yahweh Shai. The rest of the one-third, the men, women, children, and the believers, they're going to be under the 144,000, but they're all going to be righteous. The men are still going to be righteous rulers in the kingdom of heaven, just on a lower level than 144,000. And then the two-thirds will be born in the kingdom, which we made videos explaining all this stuff, but Jake don't study. They don't watch the videos. They just watch the ones where people getting cut or the police got called or some some strange happened. This is Psalms 2 and 8. Ask of me and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. So the whole earth is going to be possessed by the Hebrew Israelite. The nation's going into slavery. Okay, period. Right? The heathen's going to be an inheritance to us. Ask of me and I shall give thee a heathen for thine inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in potters. Uh, thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. vessel. There you go. So, yeah, the nation's going into slavery. Let's get a few scriptures proving that. Jeremiah 30. They're all going into captivity. Look at this. Yeah, Jake is all over the place. Even these, you got rest Lynn. Does the mark, uh, does it, the mark of the beast have to be enforced and the Antichrist rules along with World War IV? But man, take your ass to sleep, man. No damn World War IV. You see that? World War Four, <laughs> and and first off, there's no such thing as no one Antichrist ruling shit. That's Christian madness. There's no one. The Antichrist gonna come and then he gonna take his head off, then the other head gonna pop up. No, 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 no. There's no, there's no Antichrist, man. Right? The scriptures say even now there are many Antichrists. You know who the Antichrist is? Esau, the so-called white man ruling now. That that fucker is the Antichrist. And anybody that's against the word of the Lord can be an Antichrist. But who is speaking of? That wicked being revealed in, in Second Thessalonians, that's Esau Edom, the so-called white man, man. Okay? That Antichrist bullshit has been disproved over and over. Like this, this, this one world leader going to come, he's going to force the mark of the beast. You already see the mark of the beast being prepared. Who is this doing it? These white motherfuckers, man. These Edomites. And that dude probably was white. Pushing your madness. Anyway, going back to it. This is Jeremiah 30. Now, at the top, it says, deliverance from captivity promise. This is a future thing promised to the Israelites, deliverance from captivity, because they've been exiled until the Lord comes and saves them. Let's see, verse 3 says, mm. yeah, we'll read it. It says, for lo, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will bring again the captivity of my people, Israel and Judah, all 12 of the tribes, saith the Lord, and I will cause them to return 
to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. So until you see all 12 of the tribes together with the Savior, America's destroyed already, going back to the Holy Land, then the real Israelites haven't went home. Which when we read this to the Christians, they just pretend like we didn't read what we just read. Verse 4, and these are the words that the Lord spake concerning Israel and concerning Judah. Right? Then it goes into Jacob's trouble. We're going to skip over that. Let's jump in here, verse 10. He says, Therefore, fear not, fear thou not, O my servant Jacob, said the Lord, neither be dismayed, O Israel, for lo, I will save thee from afar, and thy seed from the land of their captivity, and Jacob shall be shall return and be in rest and be quiet, and none shall make him afraid. Showing you obviously the people in the Holy Land are not the Israelites, because they're still afraid to this very day. Now we go to verse 16. I'm going to start at 15. It says, Why criest thou for thine affliction? Thy sorrow is incurable for the multitude of thine iniquity. You are all messed up in the earth because of the multitude of your sins. Because thy sins were increased, I have done these things unto thee. Therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured, and all thine adversaries, every one of them, every one of them, shall go into captivity. And they that spoil thee shall be a spoil, and all, they, and all that prey upon thee will I give for a prey. So obviously here, all nations are going into captivity, every one of them. Nobody's going to escape. For I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds, said the Lord, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, because they call thee an outcast, saying, this is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. So yeah, all nations going into, into slavery. Let's get Revelation. Let's see what brother, brother might have put it up. I searched the comment board to see what scriptures I can use. So that way, I mean, I have to go and read all of them. Let me just see what I got here. Yeah, let's prove this point that uh, good soldier and, well, good soldier got it. And uh, GMS and the Truth of Orlando also has it. First John 2, 18. Little children, it is the last time and as you have heard that Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. There's not one, la one Antichrist. Also, another brother had it as well. GMS in the truth, Orlando, 1 John 4 and 3. And every spirit that confesses not that Yahweh Shah Hamashiach is coming to flesh is not of the Most High. And this is that spirit of Antichrist whereby you have heard that it should come. And even now is it already in the world. Now I'll say that the person that asked the question, I thought it was sincere until I saw that World War IV. <laughs> that shit set me off. Okay, let's, yeah, let's keep it moving. So this is also another captivity scripture. Not that one. Well, yeah, that one too, but uh, this brother, Jim, that's how Rakar has it. Uh, it says, In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that has fallen and close up the breaches thereof. All 12 tribes going to come back together with no animosity, nothing in between them. And I will raise up his ruins and I will build it as in the days of old that they may possess the remnant of Edom. And it's talking about the lands of Edom and all the heathen which are called by my name, said the Lord, that doeth this. Okay. We read Revelation 2. We read that one in 27, 2, 26, 27. We read those. Okay. So let's get back to what we got over here. So back in Jeremiah, I'm sorry. Let's go to Revelation, which I was about to do. Revelation. The Christians don't like when we read these scriptures, but we got to read them. Because we ought to obey the most high rather than men. Revelation. I drew a blank. 13. That's it. Revelation 13 and verse 9, it says, If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. So obviously here, all nations going into captivity because they led us into captivity and they got to get paid back for their deeds. Let's get, uh, hold on here, let me get it together. And change. And I think a brother got that on com on the comment board. I will read it because I just passed it. So let's go and get that. Um, nope. No, I was wrong. It's Isaiah. He has Isaiah 4 and 5. It wasn't 45. But I'm going to read this brother's scripture because that's fire. This is GMS and the Truth Orlando. For uh, Isaiah 14 and 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. Okay. And will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land, right? And the strangers shall be joined with them and shall cleave to the house of Jacob. This is the Israelite, uh, the other nations, okay? 
Let's see. I'm sorry, Salakia. And uh, will yet choose Israel and join them in their own land. And the stranger shall cleave unto them and shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Right? So you're going to have the Gentile Israelite, Israelite foreigners, and all those from the Holy Land will come back together. And we go into the Holy Land. Now it says in verse 2, and the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for service and handmaid. This is the other nations. They're going to be taken into captivity and the people shall take them, the people of the house of Israel and Jacob and the strangers, right, which is the Israelite foreigners, shall take them and bring them to their place and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for service and handmaids. All nations going into slavery and they shall take them captives whose captives they were proving that what we said, up, you know, in verse uh, in verse two, further up in verse two, they shall take them captives whose captives they were and they shall rule over their oppressors and when you're reading that it further down in isaiah 14 it chronicalizes the end of the wicked's kingdom which is esau eden the so-called white man which is the, the roman empire so again i gotta go back and read that again and the people shall take them and bring them to their place the land of israel and the house of israel shall possess them in the land of the lord for service and handmaids and they shall take them captives whose captives they were and they shall rule over their oppressors that's very plain over here in Isaiah 45 and 14, it says, Thus saith the Lord, the labor of Egypt and the merchandise of Ethiopia and of the Sabians, men of stature, shall come over unto thee, and they shall be thine. See that? They're going to be belong unto us. They shall come after thee in chains. They shall come over, and they shall fall down unto thee. They shall make supplication unto thee, saying, Surely God is in thee, and there is none else. There is no power. See, there's no God. So they're going to be in chains. All the nations are going to be in chains. Let's get, uh, I'm going through the scripture so quick. I'm losing some. Um, just hold on. There's certain ones I want to hit before I get to the main ones with that describe, describe the breakdown of the, you know, of the, how the kingdom is going to be ran. All right, I know what it is now. Psalms 149. Let's grab it. Because that talks about the elites of this society. You know what? Let's do it this way. Psalms. See, this is the reason why Jake rather ask questions than study because you got to go through a lot of stuff. They rather just ask us and let us go through it instead of you know what I mean, taking notes and reading it for itself. But there's nothing wrong with you know. I said the lesson would be good for edification. Now the person asked the question a few days ago, and I said I'll save it and that then go answer it. So this is Psalms one forty nine and five. It says, "Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds." Now we know Psalms one forty eight. The saints are the Israelites. As a matter of fact, uh, it talks about him up here. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. So it's the Israelites. For the Lord take a pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of the Most High be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. To execute vengeance upon the heathen, all the nations, and punishments upon the people. To bind their kings with chains slavery and the nobles with fetters of iron to execute upon them the judgment written this honor have all his saints praise ye the lord so you see there and we've been continuously bringing out scriptures of the of the uh the nations going into slavery now let me briefly break away out of that for a second and this brother had it too yeah he had it already right there's another one. Oh, i know there's one more good one i can get let's grab it um Treader of grapes. Okay, so this is uh, Amos nine thirteen, and the brother might even had this up, and I just overlooked it. Yeah, the yeah, brother did put this up. It says, "Behold, the days come," said the Lord, "that the plowman shall overtake the reaper." Who is the plowman? The person that worked in the field with the plow. Who's the reaper? Those that benefited from the plant or from the uh, the plowman working. So it says the plowman that the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes him that sow a seed and the mountains shall drop sweet wine and all the hills shall melt. See, and I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them and they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof. They shall also make gardens and eat the fruit of them and I will plant them plant upon them and I will plant them upon their lands. 
and they shall no more be pulled out of their land which i have given them saith the lord thy power so the nation's going into slavery we're going to overtake them they're going into cap and we're going to come out of captivity they're going into captivity we're going to get the homeland back now when it says israel is going to rebuild the kingdom or that israel is going to uh that we're going to build we're not going to literally do it ourselves we're going to have forced labor slave labor is going to do it these scriptures describe this and before we read it let's go back to the to the person's question because we did a lot of reading of scriptures but it's all backing up it's all building up to you know to answer this question we're just giving many precepts to prove you we know without a shadow of a doubt so he said but if your house shot does all the heavy lifting then what would the so-called white men and other nations do since they would be our slaves I thought we was going to make them build our kingdom since we built theirs. Well, you be reading all the scriptures now, proving that they are going to build a kingdom. But let's get, now we get these two chapters in Isaiah, which clearly outline and identify this. So this is Isaiah chapter 60. It says, a glorified Zion, right? Glorified Zion. So we're going to jump down here about, mm, I'm going to go ahead verse 10. It says, and the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls. This is the other nations. They're going to build up thy walls, and their kings shall minister unto thee. We just read it in Psalms 149. For in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor have I had mercy on thee. Okay? Hold on there. Y'all brothers killing on the comment boards. Great stuff. It says, therefore thy gate shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day nor night that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles and that their kings may be brought. They be, they, they're the slaves. They come to be brought to work for the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall utterly perish. Salakia. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Yeah, those nations shall be utterly wasted. It's proof that they're going to have to work. The glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee, the fir tree, the pine tree, and the box together to beautify the place of my sanctuary, and I will make the, the place of my feet glorious, meaning all the best wood, trees, you know, building materials are going to be dedicated to building our kingdom and our palaces and the Lord's. Everything that's beautiful and wonderful, we're going to have. No cheap stuff, right? The best trees, the best gold, the best silver, the best diamonds, whatever. Verse 14 says, The sons also of them that afflicted thee, shall come bending unto thee and all they that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet and they shall call thee the city of the lord the zion of the holy one of israel you see it whereas thou hast been forsaken and hated so that no man went through thee i will make thee an eternal excellency a joy of many generations thou shalt also suck the milk of the gentiles and shall suck the breast of kings and thou shalt know that i am yahweh Bahashem Yahweh am thy savior and thy redeemer, the mighty one of Jacob. Now you take that with a grain of salt. We know that the most high is called that. But who's going to play that out? Yahweh Shai is going he's also known as the savior, right? And the redeemer. See, he and his father are one, but they got, you know, the most high going he's gonna be present, but he's gonna be, he's, you know, just there. The most high gonna be all around, but Yahweh Shai is gonna be there in the flesh, in the literal ruler. You know what I mean? And his brother had it right here too. He got another one. He got Isaiah 49 and 26. And I will feed them that oppress thee with their own flesh. They shall be drunken with their own blood as with sweet wine. And all flesh shall know that I am the Lord. I, the Lord, am thy Savior and thy Redeemer, the mighty one of Jacob. Plain and simple. Um, and also, it's going to be peace on earth after, after, you know, the nations are conquered. It's going to be peace. I said two and four because the world was the world was going to completely decimate the earth, which we hadn't got to that yet, but we'll get to it. Good soldier, I said two and four, and he shall judge among the nations. This is Yahweh Shai. Man, y'all got y'all got some excellent scriptures. I I can't even read them all because I'm I'm gonna be overwhelmed. It's too much. But whoever watching, you take these notes off the comment board and the ones I'm bringing out as well. And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people, and they shall beat their swords in the plowshares. Soils are instruments of killing, plowshares are instruments of growing food, and their spears in the pruning hooks, same deal. Nations shall not rise up against Salakia. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. See it? 
So there's not going to be any more war on the planet because the wicked going to be put off, uh, taken and put into captivity. Okay. Yeah. This And this is one of the blessings out of Deuteronomy. Basic wisdom. Deuteronomy 28 and 11. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy ground, in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, I believe. Yep. Thy fathers to give thee. Now that shows you that in the the blessings that's going to come upon us in the kingdom, because you got a lot of Israelites saying going to be no sex in the kingdom. Well, how's the most I going to bless the fruit of our body? <laughs> it's too easy. Okay, so let's get back to it now. So over in Isaiah 60, and I, yeah, we're going to keep reading here. So I want to make a point. It says, thou shalt also suck the milk of the Gentiles and shall suck the breast of kings. Now, obviously, <laughs> but I have to say it, obviously, ain't going to be no... We righteous rulers, we're gonna be sucking the breasts of men. Okay, it's talking about you're gonna get all the best things of theirs. When they go into captivity, we're gonna consecrate all their gain to the Lord of hosts. Let's grab that real quick. Everything they possess, which really is ours, we're gonna take it back. Consecrate. Yeah. Michael 4 13. It says, Arise and thresh, O daughter of Zion, for I will make thine horn iron. And I will make thy hoofs brass, and thou shalt beat in pieces many people. And I will consecrate their gain unto the Lord and their substance unto the Lord of the whole earth. So we're going to get everything that the nation's got. All their wealth, all their riches, all that. All that oil wealth in Dubai, all that's coming back to us. Because really, this is our planet. So back in verse 17 here, it says, Isaiah 60, 17, For brass I will bring gold, and for iron I will bring silver, and for wood, brass, and for stones, iron, I will also make thy officers peace and thine exactors righteousness. See it? So it's just showing you the, the, the immaculate condition and the opulence that's going to be in the kingdom of heaven. There ain't going to be no little, you know, fake materials. Everything going to be precious stones and pearls and diamonds, you know, gold. We're going to be walking on the streets of transparent glass as, or transparent gold, as it were, glass, as the scriptures say. We're going to be walking on soft stuff. We're going to be walking on no hard cement like here. We probably won't even walk. We may just float. Who knows? Isaiah 60, 18. Violence shall no more be heard in thy land, wasting no destruction within thy borders, but thou shalt call thy walls salvation and thy gates praise. See it? I got to keep going. The sun shall be no more thy light by day, neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto thee. This is not literal. There will going to still be the regular earth. You know, of course, super, super earth remade in righteousness and the sun and the moon going to be present. It's talking about the understanding. Okay, but the Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light of thy and thy, thy power, thy glory. We're gonna have all the uh, as it's gonna go on to say, thy sun shall no more go down, neither shall thy moon withdraw itself. We're not gonna go into the curses. We're not gonna be in the madness and blindness. We're gonna have full capabilities of our mental, of our minds, and we're gonna know all things. For the Lord shall be thine everlasting light, and the days of thy morning shall be ended. No more curses. The curses are over in the kingdom. Thy people also shall be all righteous, all righteous. The two thirds coming back in the kingdom, they're going to be all righteous because they're going to get new bodies. They're going to be reborn in the kingdom. The elect is going to be changed at the second coming of the Lord. If a brother feel like putting up them, you know, this mortal must put on immortality. If you want to put it on the comment board, you can. But when the elect is taken up into the chariots, snatched out of the way of certain death, they're going to be, they're going to be changed. They're going to be perfect. The law on your inward parts, we go over that stuff all the time. The two-thirds are going to die on this side. They're going to come back in the, in, the, in the kingdom of heaven, reborn as children with righteous flesh. They're going to be perfect as well, but they're going to have to be reborn that way. We're going to be made that way by the Lord. See? So there are benefits to being of the elect on this side. You want to be changed out of this body into a new, fresh body. Right? It says here, verse 21, Thy people shall also shall be all righteous. They shall inherit the land forever. The branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. A little one shall become a thousand because it's going to be a lot of baby making. Children going to be being born. Many wives, little, a little kid going to be born in the kingdom. And he's going to grow up. For example, and I'll say, I would like to think about this. Some brothers and sisters out there now have babies now, right? You might have a newborn or a one or two year old. They're going to leave this life lord willing they make it with you and you lord willing you make it they y'all gonna go into the kingdom together they're gonna grow up in the kingdom of heaven 
right? And having they're gonna be some of the only people that ever lived in both lifetimes. They've lived over here in this wicked world, they're gonna go into the kingdom of heaven and they'll tell stories to those that are born in the kingdom how how it was over here. If they, you know, if you got toddlers or they're 10 or 11, they may make it. And we will say how the old world was, but your children, particularly, they're gonna be they're gonna grow up in the kingdom if they, you know, if the Lord comes. Lord willing, he comes while they're still young. You know, you know how it is. I'm, I'm saying too much, but y'all got it. A little one shall become a thousand, and a small one, a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. So whether they're born in the kingdom or they little kids that came over from this side and went in the kingdom, they're going to become a thousand. A little one shall become a thousand, and a small one, a strong nation. Because why? Nobody's going to perish. Israelites going to be born. They're going to live on. Then they're going to have children. They children, children, they children, children, they children, 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 children. children. It's just going to keep going. Nobody's ever going to die. So we're going to replenish. You see? We're going to just replenish. We're going to be a bunch of us. And we're going to be in our world. And Esau, Edom going to be a slave. So that's Isaiah 60. Now, if you go to Isaiah 61, let's go to the next, the next chapter. Isaiah 61 and 1. Yeah, you're going to have all kind of little, little weak. I don't know what this guy, what, what, what? OP, OP, OP. <laughs> he probably was trying to say okay and slipped up. That, I don't know. Let's get back to it. So, this is Isaiah 61. Another important chapter that says, Exaltation of the afflicted. The afflicted are going to be exalted. We'll start at verse 1. Isaiah 61 and 1. The spirit of the Lord power is upon me. Because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. See it? He has anointed, he has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Now you have Edomites that say, they'll say, Jesus, well, we know it's your shot. They say he never talked about slavery. Yeah, he did. And he even quoted this chapter. Let's go to Luke. Because he quoted out of Isaiah 61. He also talked about. That's even him in Revelation saying he's going to give power over the nations. This is Luke 4. Just hold on here. Um, right here. Luke 4 and 17. We we'll started 16. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for the read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Esaias. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. Now, Isaiah is Isaiah, so he's reading the book of Isaiah. He found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach the deliverance to the captives, and the recovering of, of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. So this is reading right out of the book of Isaiah. Let's go back to it. So right here, Isaiah 61 and 1, the spirit of the Lord powers upon me because he has anointed, he has, the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. And this is the Israelites. Hold on, y'all. Turn this fan on. <clears throat> So all these that are being spoken of there are Israelites, the meek, the captives, because the people of Israel exiled with captives to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to com to comfort all that mourn. See, it says all that mourn, not just the Israelites, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, oops, to give unto them beautiful ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. See it? So this is the Israelites right here. We have to go into the kingdom talk now. See? About to go into the kingdom talk now. So it's established who it was talking about. Now what's it going into? Going into verse 4. And they shall build the old waste. They shall raise up the former desolation, and they shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. The planet going to be ruined. Particularly the Holy Land gonna get hit with nukes and it's gonna burn them phonies out of there and it's gonna be a wreck over there and the Lord is gonna have, have we're gonna have to re, get it rebuilt but we're not gonna do it ourselves. Listen, it says and strangers shall stand and feed your flocks 
and the sons of the aliens shall be your plow men and your vine dressers. They're going to be working in the field, picking whatever we need, pick, milking cows, whatever. They're going to be in slavery, hardcore bondage, and we're going to do it big. We're going to have palaces and, you know, we know we got to have meeting places and cities, all that. We're going we're gonna to have everything, man. Every, we're going to have every, every, our civilization is going to be more immaculate than this, and we're going to have spiritual power. How you like that? And we're going to live forever, and we're going to be perfect. Without a without a hair out of place. See? And we're gonna have eternity. All the riches of the earth, we're gonna have everything and eternity to enjoy it. But ye shall be named the priests of the Lord. Men shall call you the ministers of our God. You shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory you shall boast yourselves. Right, that's sucking the breasts of Gentiles and kings. We're gonna eat the riches of theirs. For your shame, ye shall have double, and for confusion they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess the double. Everlasting joy shall be unto them. You see it? So we don't really need to go on reading more there. But it's laid out. The nations are clearly going into slavery. They're clearly going to build up our kingdom. There's also, let's read this one. Showing that it's going to be forced. That if they don't they don't want to work, they're going to get plagues. Like they, like they could not do what we said. They're going to do it. When the whole world sees how the most high gonna fuck up America, how them chairs gonna come here and run roughshod over the whole globe, they're gonna be afraid of us. And they see that spiritual power, they're gonna be afraid of us. Okay. This is uh Zechariah 14 14. It says, And Judah also shall fight at Jerusalem, and the wealth of all the heathen round about shall be gathered together, gold and silver and apparel in great abundance. Did you hear that? We getting all the goods and so shall be the plague of the horse of the mule and of the camel and of the ass and of all the beasts that shall be in these tents as this plague and it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king the lord of hosts and to keep the feast of tabernacles guess what all the nations are gonna have to be under our vibration they're gonna have to do what we tell them to do they're gonna have to celebrate our holidays like we do now when passover comes they're going to have to celebrate it. They ain't going to want to do it. There ain't going to be no more Islam, no magic carpets, no bowing down five times a day to pray to a God that cannot save. None of that shit. No simple, crazy guy with eight arms standing here with an elephant trunk with damn dreadlocks. No, none of that. They're going to be all done away with. All them idols, their houses are going to be shit houses. They place to worship are going to be, you know, we're going to go and relieve ourselves in them places, man. <laughs> if, if, which they're going to just be destroyed. So it says, all nations are going to have to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. So they're going to get a drought. You want to be funny? This is after they let out of captivity. They go back to their own lands after a thousand years. And they try to act like they know they're going to go back to worshiping their own gods. Hell no. They're going to still have to come and bow down. And if the family of Egypt go not up and come not, they have no rain. There should be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacles. This shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacles. So nations that won't do what they're supposed to do are going to be punished. And after they let out of slavery after a thousand years, they're going to be tributaries, which means they're going to still be under us. They're going to owe us. They're going to come and try to get their daughters to be our slaves and all that stuff. I mean, you know. Y'all can just imagine on and on. So let's go back to this guy's question and answer the other part. If we can, so we may get into the nuclear war or whatever a little bit. Okay, so we answered all that. But if your house shot does all the heavy lifting, then what would be the so-called white man? What will the so-called white man and the other nations do since they will be our slaves? I thought it was gonna make we was gonna make them build our kingdom since we built theirs. Well, you just got all the answers. Now, here he says, also, Scripture says that when your shot comes back, he is coming to kill. Well, if the Scriptures say that, where is the Scripture? The Scriptures say that his garment will be drenched in blood and that we, Israelite men, will fight alongside your shot after we have been changed into our new immortal bodies. It also says that earth will be destroyed by thermonuclear fire. We already proved that. No, the Scriptures don't say that. Okay? Only America, Babylon, the Great, and certain, certain portions of the earth are going to be destroyed. Like Israel, for example, it's going to be destroyed, but it's going to be rebuilt. America's not going to be rebuilt. It's going to be a desert. So he says, well, if the nukes are going to be used to destroy our enemies, then who is your house shot coming back to fight if everybody's going to already be dead? Where did he read that at? 
What did he read that? Will the news be used before or after your house shots war with the nations? All right. So to answer the question at the bottom, the nukes are going to be used by the nations against one another. Right? Let's go to Joel chapter three. Let's go there first. They're gonna they're gonna set it off. Yahweh is gonna come and he's gonna end that war. And then they're gonna try to fight him. Which we'll come back to that. Joel. Three. World War Three is going to be fought because of the controversy of Zion. The Most High gonna have World War Three jump off, so they fuck up everybody's civilization, and that's it. So it's judgment on the nations. Really, it says the nations will be judged right here. Joel three and one. For for behold, in those days and at that time when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. Well, that's what a world war is gonna be fought. It's going to be fought all over the earth, but that's the main theater of war in the Middle East. And we'll plead with them there for my people and for our heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. So that's the most high is pissed off at the nations. They're going to go and fight World War Three because of you just heard it. Now we go to verse nine. It says, proclaim you this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men that all the men of the war draw near. Let them come up. See it. So it's calling all the nations. To fight one another, beat your plowshares in the swords and your pruning hooks in the spears. Take all your agriculture money and put it in your military. Let the weak say I am strong because all of them have nuclear weapons. And they, they consider themselves a strong nation. Assemble yourselves and come all ye heathen and gather yourselves together round about. Thither cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Now the neat thing about this is this is on a, on a set schedule according to what the most I got going on right now. The nations are being gathered, but slowly. Meanwhile, the elect is being sealed by, you know, the preaching and the teaching, right? The chariots are showing themselves, signaling that the Lord is about ready to do his business. Once the elect is sealed and, you know, and spiritually sealed and out of the way spiritually, then the Lord is going to allow the next wave of things to happen. We'll try to illustrate some of that. It takes so many scriptures to, you know, to prove all of that, but we can do it. Joel 3 and 12, let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat, for there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. This is World War III or Armageddon. They got to fight it because the Most High is going to be using that to judge the nations. Put you in the sickle for the harvest is ripe. Now the harvest is the end of the world. Come get you down for the press is full, the fats overflow for their wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. Now, let's go prove that this harvest is the end of the world because this is Matthew. Is it 13? Yeah, let's go there. Matthew 13. Come on. And verse. Around about 37, I believe. Yeah, Matthew 13, 37. It says, I'll start at 36. Then Yahweh shall send the multitude away and went into the house and the disciples came unto him saying, declaring to us the parable of the tares of the field. He answered and said to them, he that sowed the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. And now this goes into the literal and the spiritual aspects of the tares and the wheat. The literal tares and wheat let me come back to me. The wheat are the Israelites. The tares are those that of another nation whose children look like Israelites and you can't tell them apart. For example, you got a so-called black woman married to a so-called white man who's an Edomite and you have a baby together. The seed is after the father, which that child is an Edomite, but it may look like it's got qualities of both. So it's going to look like a little jig, a little light-skinned boy running around. And then he's going to see the gospel and going to come against it because his spirit goes back to his father's DNA and lineage, not DNA, father's lineage. And he's an Edomite, but he looks like a Jake and you can't tell him apart. And you get at many different scenarios like that. OK, so the tares and the physical are Israelites. I mean, I'm sorry, Edomites that look like Israelites. OK, or other nations that look like Israelites as well, because maybe their mothers are Israelites. But they still tares, though. OK, now in the spirit. In the spiritual aspect, tares are who? And what are the wheat? The wheat are the elect. The tares are wicked Israelites 
who are not of the elect. Okay, that's who tares are. Spiritual wickedness, spiritual wicked Israelites. Anyway, it says the enemy that sold them is the devil, right? They got you know Israelites that are tares. They got evil spirits. It says the harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. So the harvest is the end of the world. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. So when Joel said, "Get you down for the, the press is full, the fats overflow." Let's go back to it. Joel three. Dog on it. You have to. When you do these lessons, somebody asks these questions with all that. You have to work. It ain't just easy. Joel three thirteen. Put you in the sickle for the harvest is ripe. Which really is, mean, is mentioning too that it's time for the wheat to be taken, and that's the end of the world. Come get you down for the press is full, the fast overflow for their wickedness is great. Now let's go real quick to Revelation 14. And you'll see Yahweh Shah coming right there, and he's gonna save and destroy that in that scripture. Revelation 14. <clears throat> Because the brother, the, the brother asked the question. Let's read it again. He's asking his okay, I can't even remember it. I just have to read it again. Okay. He says, also scripture says that when Yahweh Shah comes back, he's coming to kill. He's gonna judge and make war. That's true. The scriptures say that his garment will be drenched in blood, and that we, Israelite men, will fight alongside Yahweh Shah. Now, when it says drenched in blood, Isaiah 63 and 1. Through like eight or six, also Revelation nineteen and eleven on down, his vesture dipped in blood. So he's not going to literally get blood on his clothes, and that we Israelite men will fight alongside Yahweh Shai as we have been changed to our new immortal bodies. And that's in a bit, bunch of different scriptures that describe that. And also in the book of Jude, it says uh, the Lord is going to bring with him ten thousand of his saints, which is the Israelites, the angels, and righteous Israelites of all times going to come back and the elect is going to be taken up to meet them in the air and they're going to all be together and they're going to fight with the Lord you know against the nations after we come back down it also says that the earth will be destroyed by thermonuclear fire no we disproved that because the earth abided forever well if the nukes are going to be used to destroy our enemies then who is your house shot coming back to fight if everybody going to be already already be dead now first off if the nukes going to be used to destroy our enemies where are they going to be shot from we do we have the nukes no, they're going to fight World War Three and destroy one another. Good example. Brother got tears. For example, Kamala Harris, Tracy Ellis Ross, and Lauren London. I don't know that much about Lauren London, but also you have others. Lenny Kravitz, right? And other people. Tia, Tia and Tamara are tears. We believe, anyway. So, as Jake said there, yeah, well, if nukes are going to be used to destroy our enemies, then who is your house shot coming back to fight if everybody going to already be dead? Well, if the nukes got shot off and everybody on the planet died, then who is the Lord going to come and save? See, this Jake is just all over the place. Will the nukes be used before or after your house shot's war with the nations? That's really his question. They're going to be used neither. They're going to be used by each other. While they're on the way, how is going to come and snatch his elect out of the way? The nukes going to hit their mark. They're going to destroy Babylon the Great. See? And other places, you mutually assured destruction. But the whole earth is not going to be destroyed, but it will be affected by it. That's why we're going off with the Lord someplace. We're going to go to the wilderness and to all that, you know, nuclear catastrophe and devastation, you know, till that's all cleared out. And the nation's going to be in peril. They're going to be going through a lot of shit. It's going to be all kind of torrential rain, acid rain. The heavens might be black. I mean, uh, the sun might be blackened. It's going to be a terrible condition on the planet, but we're going to come and we're going to fix everything. Now, we will use spiritual power to fix, you know, probably the atmosphere and the water and all that stuff. We'll see. You know, we'll, we'll see then. We don't know exactly step by step. We'll see, well, the Lord going to put these people over the recreational and the wildlife to replenish the earth with animals. And you're going to be over here. You're going to make all the new water. You can use whatever color you want. You get to make the trees. This brother, he gonna come. He gonna put all the tat, you know, all the fish back in the water. We don't know all that. We don't know how it's gonna play out like that. It's not written that way. So those things have to occur as well. But let's get Revelation fourteen. We know that the earth gonna be remade in righteousness, and we don't know exactly how it's gonna be done. But we do know that when the the animals that purify the oceans are allowed to do that, then everything's gonna go back to its pristine state. Water will be water. 
There ain't going to be no damn GMOs, no Terminator seeds, right? No fake gas made out of corn. We don't even know if we're going to use gas. There ain't going to be no damn automobiles. We're not going to use those things. We're not, this way of living, see, Jake think the kingdom of heaven going to just be like now, but we're going to be in charge, you know? <laughs> we're going to still have to have a bank account. We're going to have a white man facing our money, but we the rulers. No, that ain't going to happen. A complete, look, man, this shit going to be wiped out. This existence is going to be through with. We're going to be new people in a new place, in a new world. Yup. The brother said it. We need to restart in the names of Yahweh by Hashem and Yahweh We're going to get that. And the earth going to get it. It's going to get peace. No more oil spills. You know, all this shit going on on the planet. A damn pipeline breaking open in the ocean and uh, catching on fire, catching the water on fire like the other week. Your ass need to go behind the bomb shelter because you ain't going to fucking make it. Who said we were worried about nuclear missiles? We ain't worried about them. You the one should be worried about them. Biatch. Oh, wash or Shana. Fuck out of here. Anyway, Revelation 14, 14, it says, and I looked and behold a white cloud. This is the great chariot of the Lord. And upon the cloud, one sat like unto the son of man, Yahweh Shai, having on his head a golden crown and in his hand a sharp sickle. This is the second coming. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud. Thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time is come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. He's coming to take his wheat, harvest the wheat. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. This is the elect going up into the chariots. He reaped the earth, he took the sickle, his figurative words, he chopped the wheat and took it up into the barn. What happens to the tares? And another angel came out of the temple, which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the out from the altar, which had power over fire and cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sharp sickle and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. This is the judgment going out. The clusters of the earth, which are grapes, going to be stomped out. And the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of the Most High. And the wine press was trodden without the city, and blood came out of the wine press, even to the horse bridles, by the space of a thousand and six hundred thirlongs, which just means what? That the most high is going to cause a lot of blood to be shed. How is I going to do a lot of killing? That's your Isaiah 63. That's your Isaiah 66, 15. Revelation 19, which we're going there now. Revelation 19. Now, during this time, when the Lord comes back, World War III is going to be already kicked off. When they see the chariots coming, they're going to try to stop fighting each other and fight the Lord. Now, this is Revelation 19, 14. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of almighty power. See, so he's coming. He's going to be the one of the winepress, as we just read. He's going to be stomping out nations from everywhere picking up the elect zapping people with laser beams you know terrorizing the whole planet and then when world war three this you're going to see it and he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written king of kings and lord of lords right now verse 19 let's just we just skip over here and i saw the beast and the kings of the earth who was the beast there ain't no one antichrist the beast is the system right america nato and the eu which is you know the dragon part of you know that uh roman empire that great red beast okay which is now america nato and the eu and then you're gonna have them and other allies of theirs that are not a part of nato or part of that beast per se they're gonna be together and also their opponents they fighting each other and i saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies human beings gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army see that's now you got the Space Force and all these people preparing to fight the Lord when he comes at his second coming because he's coming to save his elect. They want to try to prevent him from coming to set up the kingdom of heaven on earth, but they ain't going to be able to do it. Now we go. Let's go to second Ezra. We'll bring that up. Hold on here. Which it goes all the way into detail. And before we read that, we'll also get out of there 34. Well, we're going to have to go ahead and get it now, but. Let's see here. Let's 
See, now, you, I'll go through all this and read all these, and in a month from now, another new Jake, don't know, you know, just, just woke up to the truth, will ask all these same questions or something like it, and we have to go through all this shit again, man. I mean, not shit, but we have to go through all these scripts again. But that's why I always send, you know, make videos, keep track of them. You can just send them the link. So this is 2nd Ezra chapter 13 right here. All right. This is when the Lord comes. This is 2nd Ezra 13 and 1. And it came to pass after seven days I dreamed a dream by night. And lo, there arose a wind from the sea that it moved all the waves thereof. This uh, sea is above. This is talking about the heavens. When the heavens open. And I beheld and lo, that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven. This is an all-out invasion. This is Yahweh with the chariots and the angels. And when he turned his countenance to look, all the things trembled that were seen under him. And whensoever he the voice went out of his mouth, all they burnt that heard his voice, like as the earth fell up when it filled the fire, which really the mouth of his ship was going to shoot out laser beams and destroy folks. And after this, I beheld and lo, there was gathered together a multitude of men out of number. Those that fought in World War, you know, we just read it in Revelation 19. They're going to leave their battle or they're going to uh, try to subdue the Lord. The, the beasts and the kings of the earth and their armies try to make war against him that sat on the, on the horse and against his army. For the four winds of heaven to subdue the man that came out of the sea. They're going to try to subdue Yahweh Shai. But I beheld and lo, he had graved himself a great mountain and he flew up upon it. It's just talking about his chariot. He came back in his great spaceship and then war was waged. Now I want to read a little more. But I would have seen the region of place where out the hill was graven and I could not. And after this, I beheld and lo, all they which were gathered together to subdue him were so afraid and yet there's fight. So even though they see the chariots. And the ferocity and the judgment that they're doing, they're going to be afraid, but they're going to still have to fight because the Lord will put the spirit on them to do so. And lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude that came, he neither lifted up his hand, nor held sword, nor any instrument of war. But only I saw that he sent out of his mouth as it had been a blast of fire, and out of his lips a flaming breath, and out of his tongue he cast out sparks and tempests. And they were all mixed together, the blast of fire, the flaming breath, and the great tempest, and fell with violence upon the multitude, which was prepared to fight, and burnt them up every one, and burnt them up every one, so that upon a sudden of an innumerable multitude, nothing was to be perceived, but only dust and smell of smoke. When I saw this, I was afraid. See that? So the, basically, they came against the Lord, and they got annihilated, burned up. You can go and read the rest of this chapter. It goes all into the specifics. You know, it breaks it down. And I may have to just read it. Um, yeah, verse 25. This is the meaning of the vision. Whereas thou sawest a man coming up from the midst of the sea, the same as he whom the most high, the highest, God the highest, hath kept the great season, which by his own self shall deliver his creature. And he shall order them that are left behind. Meaning what? They don't mean that it's going to be a left behind like on the movie because one guy bugged out over it. We did like six videos trying to get him straight. And since then, all he did was just harbor ill will and turn into the biggest demon on the planet because he can't get over. He see these words left behind. He think that means America going to have people left behind in it after after the elect is taken. That doesn't mean that when they say he shall order them that are left behind. He's going to put in order what? The hundred and forty four thousand and the two and the one third. Those are the ones that are left behind. The remnant. That's what remnant means. Left over or left behind. But they were taken. So they're going to be put in order by the Savior himself. And whereas thou was, and when I mean in order, when we get together and we go into the to the kingdom, let me just explain it. When the Lord takes us up to the chariots, where we're going to be at, the Lord going to put everything in order. Right? There ain't going to be no just people just hanging out, chilling. No, the men going to be in order. The women, the because I remember um. A, a, a lady that was in the truth that was close to me he was a wife of mine she fell out of the truth years back now but she had been in truth seven years she had a powerful dream she told me about the dream and i broke it down to her she said she saw in the dream the, the horn the uh the horn sounded the lord and the angels came back she didn't see him but she saw a bunch of chariots helicopters airplanes and such trying to fight them he said she said she even saw little chariots coming down getting certain people and the Edomites trying to jump and grab a hole, and they was getting shook off. Okay, but she said if she saw all the brothers, she mentioned Great Millstone. She said all the brothers in camps, 
uh she said if she she was getting saved which that ain't gonna happen because she she's gonna she already dead in the spirit but she said she was being taken somewhere else she said she just remembered thinking to herself where's my husband where's my husband talking about me and she said she saw a place where all the brothers was like it was way we was way bigger and we was all standing up in perfect rows in a formation in order like soldiers and that she said she could tell in the spirit that we were being prepared to come back to earth to you know to get ready to fight with the lord so that's you know i'm getting chills just talking about it so it's gonna be a situation we don't know how it's gonna play out or it's gonna be like that but we know the lord gonna take us you're gonna purge out the rebels right the other parts of israelites in pockets of the world that don't want to repent they're gonna get purged out and the lord gonna establish certain things we don't know what's gonna the great wedding feast is gonna be you know meanwhile the nation's shit gonna be chaos because the nuclear missile is gonna be then destroyed there's lack of food it's gonna be whatever going on on the planet we're gonna come back and put shit in order and take everybody into captivity so when the lord comes initially before we do all that it's gonna they're gonna try to fight him as you're gonna go on to see it says in verse 27 and whereas thou sawest that out of his mouth there came a bla as a blast of wind and fire and storm and that he held neither sword nor any instrument of war but that the rushing in of him destroyed the whole multitude that came to subdue him. This is the interpretation. Behold, the days come when the highest, most high will begin to deliver them that are upon the earth. See, and he shall come to the astonishment of them that dwell on earth because it's going to come as a snare on them that dwell upon the earth. And one, one shall undertake to fight against another. One city against another, one place against another, one people against another and one realm against another. And and the time shall be when these things shall come to pass, that the signs shall happen which I showed thee before, and then shall my son be declared, whom thou sawest as a man ascending. Where was that? That was in the book of Acts. This same how shall you have seen leave and go into heaven shall come in like manner. He's coming back the same way he left in the chariot. Isaiah 66 and 15, right? Going on. It says, and when all the people shall hear his voice, every man shall in their own land leave the battle they have one against another. Meaning, wherever people fight on the earth, when they see the all that the all out invasion, they're gonna try to band together. Let's stop fighting each other. We gotta fight these whatever aliens they may say. And when all the people shall hear his voice, every man shall in their own land leave the battle they have one against another. And the innumerable multitude shall be gathered together as thou sawest them willing to come and to overcome him by fighting. But he shall stand upon the top of Mount Zion, and Zion shall be shown, shall come and shall be shown unto all men, being prepared and built it like as thou sawest the hill graven with our hands. It's the elect going up into the chariots. It says their enemies beheld him, right? Yahweh shall a great chariot. And this my son shall rebuke. The wicked inventions of those nations which for their wicked life are fallen into the tempest and shall begin and shall lay before them their evil thoughts and their torments wherewith they shall be tormented, which are likened to a flame and he shall destroy them without labor. See, he ain't going to do no labor. He shall destroy them without labor by the law, which is likened to fire, which is the laser beams going to be coming out, annihilating a whole bunch of people. So. Nuclear war is going to be fighting. World War III Armageddon is going to be being fought. And as the Lord is coming back, the missiles going to be already on the way to their destinations. We can't tell you exactly how it look, how the countdown. We can't tell you none of that. We just know what the scriptures say. And then the Lord coming to save his elect, he's going to intervene with the war. And they're going to try to fight him, which at that time he's going to be zapping, shooting everybody. So he's going to get his elect out of the way from Babylon the Great before the missiles hit. Boom, the missiles destroy everything and everybody over here that wasn't elected in the house of Israel. We go to the wilderness. After some time, we come down out of heaven. We take over the whole globe. So when the guy asked, are the nuclear missiles going to be used before or after the Lord comes? Well, that don't make sense. I mean, it makes sense that he asked the question, but it doesn't make sense the way he asked it, you know, or that it's uh, after the Lord comes. No, it's going to be during. It's going to be during the same time. During the same time, the Lord's going to come and literally snatch his elect out of the way in the nick of time. And then the, the destruction of Babylon is going to be it's going to be wonderful. So everybody ain't going to be dead. As you can clearly see, people are going to try to fight. Let's read it. Also, Scripture says that when Yahweh comes back, he's coming to kill. That's true. The scripture, but he's not only coming to kill, he's coming to save the elect from all nations. But particularly Babylon the Great, because this is the only place going to be completely destroyed. That's why we're preaching the gospel now. 
but it's going to be certain other places on the earth that the Israelites are that may not that have not repented because those are going to be the rebels that's going to be purged out. You know, if in fact they they are rebels and uh, and other you may have, may have wicked Israelites that flee. You know, you may have since Kanye West got a billion dollars, he may run into his bunker or may go to some place overseas somewhere we don't know about, and then you know he might be confronted by the Israelites. We just don't really know. You know, a lot of stuff, a lot of holes left to be filled, but we'll find that out when we get to it. But there are going to be certain wicked Israelites around, you know, different, whether they run there or whether they just dare and the Lord left them alive. Because see, Babylon the Great going to get completely annihilated with nuclear fire, but other nations ain't going to get hit. Down there in the, uh, we believe the rainforest down there in the Amazon, they, that's not a nuclear, uh, that's not a target of nukes of Russia. That's not a target of nukes from America. You, you know, certain other places may not get hit with nuclear missiles. So they're going to be still, you know, life is, it's going to be hard because of nuclear war on the whole planet, but they're going to be still people alive and present when the Lord comes. We know that. So he says the scriptures say that his garment will be drenched in blood and that we Israelite men will fight alongside Yahweh after we have been changed into our new immortal bodies. It also says that the earth will be destroyed by thermonuclear fire. No, it does not. The earth won't be destroyed. Just certain portions. Well, if well, if nukes are going to be used to destroy our enemies, then who is your house shot coming back to fight if everybody going to be already dead or going to already be dead? We just proved it and went into that. Will the nukes be used before or after your house shots war with the nations? During. During. Okay? Not before, not after, but during. And now they're going to explode. See, we don't know what small, with nuclear war, I'm sure they'll be used during the World War III, but the Lord, gonna, he going to stop it so that There'll be flesh to be saved, Matthew 24, right? And in the nick of time, the elect will be taken out of the way. We already demonstrated with many scriptures. Now, there was, let's read some of these on the comment board because we pretty much, you know, proved the point. We read, when you read uh, uh, Second Edges 13, it tells you everything you need to know. The Lord came, but it don't talk about the nuclear fire, but we read it in other places that the nukes going to hit Babylon the Great. I may have to go to one more chapter to read So This is Nathan Yawasop. Isaiah 31 and 5, as birds flying, so will the Lord of hosts defend Jerusalem, defending also he will deliver it, and passing over he will preserve it. Talk about the people of Israel. Shalom, Elder Karakazar. GMS Gadol, Amawan, 1 Peter 4, 18 says, and if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? We're going to barely make it. This is Louisiana Tabernacle of David, 2nd Edward 16 and 11. The Lord shall threaten and who shall not be utterly beaten to powder at his presence? You know what? And I got to go get a scripture. That brother just sparked me to grab this. Let's get go back to the Apocrypha because this got a key. That that speaks of the nuclear the nukes being shot off. But, you know, through through uh, this sermon and through the Holy Spirit, we're able to put the time. Like, we don't know the exact time. We're able to put the time frame together. We know that the elect going to be snatched out of the way. But you have a shot going to have already have. These devils and these nations shoot their missiles off because that's really what it is. America will be in nuclear war with Russia, and when they hear the nuclear sirens that the nukes are on the way, everybody's gonna be mortally afraid. They're gonna be so scared. And then the elect gonna look up and the chariots gonna be coming and they go, Oh, it's the Lord. You know, and they're gonna be saved, but not 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 the wicked. So now we got second Ezra chapter 16. Let's go there. Because see, while the nuclear missiles are these, these people believe that they own them. The Most High had those formed for his purpose. And he's going to, they don't even have control over them. The Lord going to make them, make them get shot off. We're going to go here to verse 8. Just hold on. Um. Okay, yeah. We'll start up here. Verse 11, it says, The Lord shall threaten, and who shall not be utterly beaten to powder at his presence? The earth quaketh, and the foundations thereof, the sea rises up with waves from the deep, and the waves of it are troubled, and the fishes thereof also before the Lord, and before the glory of his power. For strong is his right hand that bendeth the bow, his arrows that he shooteth are sharp, and shall not miss when they begin to be shot into the ends of the world. These arrows are the nuclear missiles. 
See, they're going to be shot to the ends of the world from one side to the other. Behold, the plagues are sent and shall not return again until they come upon the earth. The fire is kindled and shall not be put out till it consumed the foundation of the earth. See? Like as an arrow which is not which is shot of a mighty archer returneth not backward, even so the plague that shall be sent upon earth shall not return again. So, and the, the nuclear missiles are called a plague. It's called a plague of hell in Revelation 16 and other chapters. Now, when you read this Isaiah 34, let's go there real quick. We're going to get ready to shut this thing down. I'm tired. Woo. Okay. Hmm. It says at the top, the most has wrath against the nations. Isaiah 34 and 1. Come near ye nations to hear and hearken ye people. Let the earth hear and all that is therein, the world and all things that come forth of it. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations. The most high is mad with every nation. Now we went into this in Joel chapter 3. And his fury upon all their armies. He hath utterly destroyed them. He hath delivered them to the slaughter. The slaughter is Armageddon. We say World War Three, and even this one guy said something about World War Four. But this is World War Three here. Nuclear war. Their slain also shall be cast out, and their stink shall come up out of their carcasses, and the mountains shall be meddled with their blood. And all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heaven shall be rolled together as a scroll. And all their hosts shall fall down as the leaf falleth from off the vine as a falling fig from the fig tree. This is the nuclear mushroom cloud. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia and upon the people of my curse to judgment. That's the Edomites. Let's get Revelation chapter 6. Yep. Revelation 6, round about 12. It says... The sixth seal, and I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake. The earthquake is going to be caused by the nuclear missiles. And the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell into the earth, even as a fig tree cast her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. See? So the nuclear missiles come. It's going to be a great mushroom cloud, right? And the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bond man and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. People of the other parts of the earth are going to try to run into them bunkers and all that. It's not going to work. And said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come and who shall be able to stand? So how is shot going to have? The missiles get shot off. People are going to be running, scrambling about over here. They're going to be trying to find, get to their shelters, their bomb shelters, the bunkers. They at least going to be gone already. Leaving you poor suckers here to die and perish in the flames. And then we're going to get the elites out of them hiding places. Psalms 149, Amos 9, and 1 on down to like 5. They all going into slavery. They're going to be first into slavery. But everybody over here in Babylon the Great, you're going to be barbecued. You through. Through with you. Let's go back to Isaiah 34 now. Finish that off and that'll be it. So back in Isaiah 34, we're talking about the Edomites. Verse 6 says, The sword of the Lord is filled with blood, it is made fat with fatness, and with the blood of lambs and goats, for the fat of the kidneys of rams, with the fat of the kidneys of rams. For the Lord has a sacrifice in Basra, and a great slaughter in the land of Adumia, representing the devils. They got a sacrifice and a great slaughter. See, they're going to be burned up. The two, the, the, the Edomites over here in Babylon, the great, they have no savior. They're going to be burned up. And just Basra is just a, another way of saying America right here, which Basra is the capital city of Edom. Don't get me wrong. But in the spirit today is America, Babylon, the great. It says, and the unicorns shall come down with them and the bulls with the bulls and their land shall be soaked with blood and their dust made fat with fatness. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance and the year of recompenses for the controversy of Zion. See, so it's payback. Now, right here, it says, and the streams thereof shall be turned into pitch and the dust thereof into brimstone and the land thereof shall become burning pitch. This is Babylon the great on fire. It shall not be quenched night nor day. The smoke thereof shall go up forever from generation to generation. It shall lie waste. None shall pass through it forever and ever. See? But the cormorant and the bittern shall possess it. The owl also and the raven shall dwell in it. And he shall stretch it, stretch out upon it the line of confusion and the stones of emptiness. 
And what does that mean? That means you ain't going to know. There's not going to be any state lines. Everything will be annihilated here. See? So you ain't going to know what South Carolina is, what Massachusetts, what, you know, North Carolina, what Philadelphia. You ain't going to know that. It's just going to be a big land mass of charred, probably just a desert, charred rubble with desert creatures. Who knows? It's really going to just be a damn desert, a plain, a, a giant plain, 5,000 mile plain desert with desert creatures and animals. So I think that's it on that. Let me see if there's something else I wanted to grab. Because there's so many scriptures running through my mind now. But I think we, we answered the brother's question. So the nukes, salvation, destruction, judgment going to be happening simultaneously while the nukes are on the way. Just in time, the lake going to get taken and this whole place going to burn, man. So Lord willing, the answers that I gave, I mean, I had to go read a lot of scriptures in order to answer it. But Lord willing, for that person that you get the understanding. Because, you know, we had to answer all of this. So that's it. Whew, tired. So we're going to end it right there. The water, everybody, for joining in with the live stream, though, for posting the scriptures. You brothers, I didn't read a whole lot of them, but, you know, that's just the way it goes sometimes. So, Lord, when this brother's question was answered, and we'll see you all again soon with another lesson, Lord willing. All praise to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rukaku Dash. Double honor to the apostles and elders of great millstone. Shalom to the holy elect. This has been Yahweh Shai, king of heaven, slavery of the nations, and nuclear war. All right? Shalom.